50 years ago today, the first car rolled off the assembly line at the General Motors Lordstown plant. A white Impala sports sedan. So whatever happened to that first car, the one highlighted in old films and so many old pictures? 27 First News anchor Stan Boney has spent the past month trying to find it. He joins us live now in Lordstown with what he found out. Stan? Well, I did find out a lot about the first car to roll off the line here at the Lordstown plant. I found the person who bought it and drove it, at least for a while. I also talked with a man, a Warren native, who now lives in Fort Collins, Colorado, who has a passion for the first car. He went looking for it, and when he couldn't find it, he built his own replica of the first car. But what I did not find was the first car itself. April 28, 1966, 10 a.m., the first vehicle is driven off the line at GM Lordstown. It's a big moment for the Mahoning Valley. GM executives Robert Gaffman and Pete Esty shook hands on their accomplishments and then turned the car, a white Chevy Impala sports sedan, over to Stanley Hart, editor of the Warren Tribune Chronicle, which bought the car off of Warren's Martin Chevrolet. That's Paul Martin on the right. But since Helen Hart Hurlbert owned the Tribune, she was the true owner of the car. And she, according to Mackie Rogers, who once worked in maintenance at the Trib, let Sid Williams, her advertising executive and right-hand man, drive it as his company car. Sid Williams was the one that drove the car. Uh, Mrs. Herbert never, she didn't drive it, but it did have the first car information on the side of it, and it was white. It was traded in on something, I think. I don't know. I, I can't remember for sure just what happened to it. Around the year 2000, we started trying to figure out where this car went. Mike Del Duca lives in Colorado, but as a young boy growing up in Warren, he was part of a Chevy family and remembers seeing pictures of the first car at the old Martin Chevrolet. Del Duca would ride by Helen Hurlbert's house, wondering if the first Lordstown car was parked inside. He was so fascinated, he built a replica of the first Lordstown car, complete with the signage on each side. All this after searching for the original. We ran the, v the VIN number through DMV in Warren. We came up short on that. They didn't have those records anymore, or they said they didn't. Mike Del Duca then started hearing that the first Lordstown car had been crushed, which took him to some of the area's scrap yards. They pretty much confirmed that the car was junked or scrapped or crushed at a wrecking yard that wasn't really all that far from the plant. Now, we have no documentation that tells us that. It's all kind of hearsay or maybe an urban legend. In a Tribune Chronicle article from August 12, 2000, in a story about a car show at the Lordstown plant, yeah, then yeah, business yeah, editor yeah, Larry Ringler writes, that. the Tribune Chronicle bought the first Chevrolet Impala made by the new plant, but that car long ago was crushed. Just from stories I've heard people talking uh, who, who were around then, uh, the car eventually uh, rusted out or was you know, eventually scrapped. Now, I also contacted someone with the Department of Motor Vehicles myself. I came armed with two VIN numbers that I thought might work. I was hoping to track who owned the car, find out the title, and track it from there. But I was told that, unfortunately, we don't have any way to find that out. I also talked with Jim Graham, the former president of United Auto Workers Local 1112. He told me that in 2006, they formed a committee to help celebrate the 40th anniversary of the first car. They went looking for it and was told that it two had been crushed or demolished, but he couldn't remember who told him that. I talked with the folks here at GM. They couldn't tell me anything either. Now, in the end, I talked with about 30 different people about where that first car might have been. The consensus is it was demolished or crushed or scrapped, but I could not find any proof at all that that's what happened. Now, we also want to let you know about a special program that's going to be coming up later on in May. Thursday, May 19th at 7.30 p.m., WKBN 27 First News will air a half-hour special called Farms to Fast Lane, 50 Years of GM Lordstown. We'll look at the history of the plant and what the future could bring. Farms to Fast Lane, 50 Years of GM Lordstown, Thursday, May 19th at 7.30 p.m. Live in Lordstown, Stan Boney, WKBN 27 First News.